Nate. Horse. Okay, so we are going to just take elements of Teki Shodan. I'd like looking, I know there's a few low grades who may not know Teki Shodan, like Christian Lola, uh, but, um, <laughs> but we will, uh, we will uh, kind of just take it part by part. Uh, so we're don't, not necessarily doing the catch-up per se, yeah? Okay, so we'll just start from the beginning. So, hey, scratch feet together, left hand on top of right. Okay, so, stepping over, goes Dutch, then your right leg up, and high suke. Okay, that's just that far, first part, yeah? So, nice relax, dropping down, get that knee up, and then snap, high suke. So, this hand is going direct high suke. Understand? Okay, do that, guys. Ten times. Let me see what you're doing. Gerard Doherty, you're just looking at the camera. Come on, train! <laughs> Whip your hand, Freya. Not your hair, your hand. Oh, nice Christian. My Christian. Okay. Okay, okay, good. Good guys, good. So look, what I want to really like, kind of talk about today is, is a little bit um, about how to use our body correctly. So, of course, um, we often think about our, our body as in joints and, and limbs and etc. But actually, I want you to think much more of your body as a, as a total web of muscle. A total web of muscle, ligaments, fascia, the whole thing, yeah? So my, my little, my big toe is connected to my little finger. And I want you to think about those connections. So in this case, I want you to think about how that leg is pulling my hip. And as it pulls my hip, it can pull my body. As it pulls my body, I can let it rip my hand. So a lot of people kind of like, they think about karate in part. First my leg does this, then my leg does that, then my arm does that. And you're kind of dissecting your body in a way that's not natural. So I want you to think that your toe is, your, your foot is affecting this hand. As you step over, your foot coming down through a series of tension is creating that whip of that hand. Understand? Okay, give that a go, guys. Rather than kind of just being uh, kind of dominated by the form, think about the connection and how that movement of the leg, boom, is going to whip that hand out. Okay, try, give it a go. If you have any questions, please ask. Okay, okay, so I just, I'm just watching a, a few people. And like, if there's any kind of over, like, for example, like, for my few of you, you're lifting this leg up, and, and like, there's this compression, and this tension here. I want you to try to keep that center line as, as much as possible, and, and because this moment that you start kind of collapsing onto yourself, the, the ability to kind of transfer that tension from your movement of your leg to the movement of your arm is a little bit more reduced. So, so as this leg comes up, keep that center line. And it's from that compression rather than this compression that you are producing that, that whip. Allow the compression or the release of the, of, the, of the leg to pull the hip, which then pulls the shoulder, which then pulls the hand to create that high shoe kick. Understand? Okay, last 30 seconds, guys. If you've got any questions at any time, please ask. So, so why yeah. wouldn't you use the other hand? So, uh, if you were doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I can't actually see you, Matthew, but uh, I know what you mean. Um, so, uh, you mean, why are we doing this? Yes. Yeah, okay, yes. okay, yummy! Good. So, I, you know, there's, there's uh, 110 people on. Uh, so, we're going to have a whole host of different organisations, uh, like, doing it different ways, and that's fine. So, so, please, if you, within your group, do it in a specific way, then that's fine. I'm, I'm not, like, really advocating one way or another. However, with this then you're engaging your pecs. 
in order to do this, right? And then you're going to use your arms. So what, basically what you're doing is you're making this high shuke, an upper body movement. Um, I don't know if today my camera keeps on going out of focus. Uh, let me see. That's my hand. And this is me. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so, so if you kind of go, you know, peck, rhombo, or peck, rhomboids, then it becomes about an upper body action. And what I really want you to do is much more about a cross, a cross um, kind of fascia action. So, so there's, a, there's a kind of fascia that goes, well, it's a whole web actually, but, but like you can imagine like the, the, the legs, muscle and ligature of the legs kind of morph into kind of a fascia that comes across your body and, and finishes with this arm. So it's much more about kind of that pulling my body and then using that kind of whip action to kind of to move, yeah? And, and, and speed is a function of relaxation. So the less kind of tension I have to use here and here to create that movement, the better, the more speed I'm going to get. The more speed I get, the more power I get. So it's about, like I said the other day, it's about finding the form and then trying to strip away effort as much as possible. So for me to just go like this, well, I had to use maybe my pecs and my rhomboids. Okay, but if I can use this to aid that movement, then I have to use less muscles to do that, less engagement with the muscles to do that. More relaxation, therefore, therefore more speed. Do you understand? Yeah, okay. Okay, guys, uh, 30 more seconds, then we're gonna move on. Then Arthur Mora, Arthur Mora, you're kind of coming up and down. You want to sink into your leg. Don't allow your energy to come up. Sink into that knee lift, yeah? Not go up with the knee lift. So, okay. Scott, you want to ask a question? Yes, sir. You can always ask a question, Scott, because you're called Scott. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, so in this case, I will send my elbow first. Now there's there's a uh, okay there's there's two you know there's 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 basically haishu uchi and haishu uke. Uh, so 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 for example, uh, haishu uchi because uh, as comes and then you're just kind of coming in. It's a bit like this kind of a uh, yurakan feeling. Whereas haishu uchi haishu uke, should I say, if someone grabs and you're anchoring that, you're coming round here and coming into a into an armbar. That's why kind of Mikazuki Geri or MP follows a lot of this haishu uke. And certainly naihanshi shodam uh, was much more like this rather than this. Shotokan haishu is this. Uh, old Okinawan is like this because you're coming over and under. So uh, like what? Oh, six. So one is much more of a kind of forearm or back backhand, should I say, smash haishu uchi strike. Whereas uke is much more elbow first. Uh, but either way, elbow does lead a little bit. It's not kind of like this direct stiff thing. You know, like you want that whip action. And so the, the more that that kind of, uh, that your joints are fluid, the more you're going to be able to whip that technique. Okay? Thank you, okay, good. Okay, guys, let's, uh, let's move on. Yeah, because I've already given each, each of us 30 minutes. 30, 30 minutes. Okay, so let's go from this point. Then, okay, MP hikite. And let's change sides. Empi hikite. So, just practice this a couple of times, guys. I want you to think about connecting that driving leg to the hip rotation, hip rotation to your chest, chest to that elbow. And then relax into double hikite, then change to the side. Okay, try a couple of times. Double hikite afterwards. Okay. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay, so, uh, um, so uh, like I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not naming a shame, but uh, Colin Frill, you were doing it, but like uh, you, were the, you were one of many, so I'm just picking on you, sorry. But like, what you don't want to do is make this about your upper shoulder, upper body. You don't want it to be about 
this tension, especially especially this tension, right? Uh, you want to be much more about kind of your lower body and you're just moving in in conjunction, yeah? So try to avoid this, this, because a lot of people do this because afterwards then you drop. So you come up, energy comes up, and then energy comes down. Kind of feels nice, yeah? I want you to kind of avoid that. What I want you to concentrate on is really opening this hip joint and then squeezing this hip joint. So like the guys have been talking a lot about inner thigh muscle, squeeze, like this is kind of part of it. So connect that leg, that drive, that arch of your foot. When I do this, all I can feel is the ball of my right foot really. The ball of my right foot to my elbow. They're the two connection points that I can feel. And what I'm doing is I'm opening this joint. Then all I'm gonna do is squeeze that inner thigh muscle. And that squeezing of my inner thigh muscle produces the hickey tip. Once you get that, then you can, all it is is a matter of tension. Tension, tension. Drive, squeeze, feeling. Drive, squeeze. And it produces upper body movement. Rather than upper body, upper body. Do you understand? What's this? These guys understand. <laughs> Do you guys understand? Okay. Oh, okay, Mandy's giving me a, a thumbs up. So it's later. Okay, guys, try. Give it, give it a couple of, couple of minutes. Give it a go. Any questions, please ask. Then Paul Fanner, there's no need to practice the whole sequence. Just specifically that M Peter Hickey say. I'm really focusing on that, really focusing on the, the opposite leg kind of expansion to compression. Yeah, Colin, Colin Field, that's that's much better. Just try to stabilize that back knee. I mean I can't see your whole stance, so that might be an issue, but try to stabilize that back knee. It doesn't collapse. The more you stretch, the more it's willing to follow, and it work against that. And then the more you stretch that, the more you're going to squeeze for the double hickey tape. Linda, more hip in. Hip, hip, hip. Let your body mass shift towards your, your other leg. Okay. Okay, Mark Jervis, just be a little bit more concerned about your, your stance, yeah? You're, like, you're, you're using your hips really nicely, using your upper body really nicely, but as soon as that foundation starts to rock, you've got to kind of stabilize that a little bit more, yeah? That's kind of the, the support system behind it. Yeah. Okay, good. Yummy. Everybody understand, guys? Have you good? A few, few thumbs up, yeah, okay. Uh, questions, go for it. No questions, yes, questions? Okay. Okay, no questions. So guys, listen, like, um, you know, we want to, you know, this idea that we're using our chest or we're using our, our hips or we're using our leg, these are all kind of constructs. Like, like nothing happens in isolation. Uh, everything is a, is a whole, right? So, so whenever you do any technique, it's a total body dynamic. It's not a hand technique. It's not a leg technique. It's not a hip rotation. It is a total body dynamic, you know? I can't possibly rotate my hips kind of this way without using all my body. Like I'm, I'm using from the, literally from my big toe of my driving leg, right way up to my kind of my head and my stabilizing of my neck. If I don't, then, then it just becomes a disconnected movement. We want total body connection in order to produce kind of any dynamic movement. Do you understand? Like so much in karate, we dissect, especially Shotokan. We're dissecting stuff. We're dissecting it and do this with your little finger and do that with your big toe. And, and it's like to the minutiae of what karate is. We're actually, these are just models for us to kind of uh, try to understand. But in, in truth, karate is a total body action every single time you do anything. You understand? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so, th so this goes for, for like this as we were talking. We're going to move on, but, but like I'm constantly thinking my leg and this part, my upper body, squeezing then relax to have that kind of stability, yeah? Okay, next one, guys. Everybody just make a huchuke. Huchuke. Okay, so from here, this high shuke yuraka. And then you can change high shuke yuraka. No, not high shuke, negashuke, sorry, negashuke. So from here, negashuke. Then this get up whatever form you make and then drive. Okay. I understand some people will come up, up uppercut. That's fine as well. Well, on this uppercut feeling, that's fine, case by case, yeah? But just try it. Let me see what you're doing. This smooth action, yeah? Give it a go, guys. Try it. Then, uh...
Yeah, try to not make it so circular though. Try to not make this circular. You can come back and I guess you gave you 10 and 12 uppercuts, so be it, but not completely round. Because then this Nagashuke is less, less dynamic, yeah? And less, less uh, meaningful in any way. Marisa, you're doing that a little bit, yeah? Good, 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 good. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so. So guys, this is what I want you to um, try a little bit. Then I understand, you know, different groups, even within, even within uh, HDKI, we have lots of different kind of uh, senior instructors teaching kata in lots of different ways. Like absolutely kind of strength through diversity. So, so I don't want to ever think that, you know, I'm, I'm telling you to do it in one specific way. That's not the case. That's not the case in, in the HDKI. It's not even the case in this dojo, right? Uh, so, so that's not important. What is important is the fundamental principles um, underpinning that. So this is what I want you to try. I want you to think about how, from this, uh, from this Uchuke, I want you to, first of all, just try this. So from this position, I want you to feel that your hip, hip first, hip then hand. So have this sense of hip and hand back, hip first. Hip first, then you rack them. Opposite side, hip first, then you rack them. It's quite a subtle timing. I'll show you from this side, maybe. Uh, it's quite a subtle, subtle timing, but from here, you're relaxing forward. You're pulling back, you're getting that stretch across your back as you make this nag uh, nagashuke. Then send this hip in. Send it, create a more of a stretch across the front of your body, which slams that forward. You understand? Know, okay, so give it a go, guys. Just try. Try to, it's kind of like um, asynchronatic um, synchronatic movement, yeah? You're not synchronized hip and hand together, you're not synchronized, yeah? Okay, give it a go. Okay, Christian, no worries. What's that saying? Yes. Why are, why are you not synchronizing your hands and hips at the same time in this technique? Oh. You're not allowed to ask a question from his armchair. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, yame, yame. Uh, this, uh, Bjorn has asked a nice question despite asking it from a position of comfort. Um, okay, look, sometimes we synchronize stuff, sometimes we don't. Like Ru was talking about it. Ru Sensei was talking about it. Uh, like in, in MP, right? Where we're like this movement in MP before we kind of do this movement, right? Then, then you know, you'll see people do kind of over flamboyant, over flamboyant movements. Some people do kind of a minimalistic kind of direct fitting, right? But each time they're kind of basically synchronizing their movement. But actually, and both are fine, you can justify, you know, the, the, like he said, there's, there's many ways to skin a cat, right? So you can justify it in many ways and, and, and that's fine. Uh, because above all else, this is just a way of teaching us uh, body intelligence. But actually also you can, you can not synchronize it. That, that kind of starting of your hip first creates a stretch. I mean, you'll, if you practice this way, you'll feel, all feel it. You stretch your body, stretch your body, and then you send that up. And it's a bit like, um, uh, uh, let's just get padded. Uh, it's a bit like, like he was talking about the uppercut, but we'll, we'll kind of apply it to a little bit more uh, karate. Um, so, so like, uh, again, like this uppercut feeling, you know, where your, your hip is going first and you open your chest, and then you kind of release it in that way. And, and the time that it takes to do that, uh, the, you, you know, you're making that sacrifice in terms of time for a greater reward in terms of, uh, of power. It's called the stretch shorten cycle. I'm stretching my abdomen. By, by putting my hip first, I'm stretching my abdomen and stretching my chest, and then I'm gonna be able to slam that short really quickly. So the more I, the more I stretch, and then slam it shut at the greater explosive power that I can create. More importantly, I'm not particularly using my arm to create that explosive power, I'm using my body, which frees up this arm to be relaxed and therefore move even faster. So, so there's, there's a whole host of times that we would sacrifice synchronization. Now, there's other times, of course, that you'd want to have complete synchronization. Like, especially if you're short range, and you want that explosive power, you're gonna synchronize, synchronize the drive of the leg, the rotation of the hip, the drive of the arm, to kind of produce that kind of synchronized movement. 
And that's kind of the basic, most formulaic starting point of all karate. But after that, after you have that synchronization, there is a whole host of ways that you can create power. So, so, so like I often use the analogy of a, of a shot putter, shot putter who is constantly looking for that synchronization, that drive of the leg, rotation of the hip, drive of the arm, same time, compared to a baseball pitcher who is stretching, then closing, stretching, then closing, stretching, then closing, and they have that whipping action. Okay, one produces a lot of power for a heavy ball, one produces a lot of speed for a light ball. You know, it's different, different, different things. Understand? Okay, so in this case, in this case, we're going to spend a couple of minutes before we move on. In this case, I want you to think that you're producing that hip, hip first to produce a far more explosive kind of dynamic movement. Okay, go for it, guys. Last 30 seconds. Come, Micha, I'm watching you. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Richard Freeman, try to stabilize that stance. Yeah, you gotta maintain that stability in your stance. Yeah, nice Christian. Cork Christian, not my Christian. Yeah, good. Then uh, Alan S. Is that Alan Smith? I'm not too sure. But don't, don't open so much, yeah? If you open, then it's very difficult to kind of... Okay, yeah, mate, guys, we're going to move on. But, but let, just, uh, just watch. I was talking to um, Alan S. there. But um, what you don't want to do is have an open feeling. Because then you start to run the, the risk of, of kind of, as you produce that stretch, kind of uh, damaging ligaments, yeah? And so your body can only take a certain amount of strain. And so the closer that is to your head... First of all, you don't need to overblock, that's one thing. But the closer that is to your head, the closer it is to your body mass, and the more you can snap your shoulder. But this, this is gonna kind of dam potentially damage your shoulder. Before it damages, you'll tense up in order to protect it naturally. Okay, Golgi tendon reflex will make you do that. Okay, so you don't wanna have this too far for a number of reasons. Firstly, there's no need to overblock. You know, if you're blocking the gas UK, once it's blocked, it's blocked. Okay, secondly, the closer it is to your body, the more you can produce that whip to create the speed. Understand? Good. Okay, okay, last one, guys, because we've only got a couple more minutes. Last one, let's just practice that. Uh, so from here, this Namyash Go feeling, yeah? So Namyash Go. So you can, it doesn't really matter, you can practice either side, but open your hip, close it. Open, close. As you close your hip, your leg's going to come up. So, so don't think about pulling your leg up. Think about opening this hip and then closing the hip. Open, close, open, close, rather than lifting your leg. Okay, once you have that, once you have that, then you're gonna naturally move into this position. Now this side is open. All I'm gonna do is close it, close it, and that produces the nanyash to produce the other side. Okay, give that a go. Hija, what are you kicking? <laughs> Then LG, LG with Bob behind you, I don't know who LG is, but LG, don't shift your body. Okay, okay, Yane, just watch guys, because L LG is not the only one who's doing this. Um, okay, uh, Ross. Okay, so this is super difficult and impossible to do, that's why I'm getting Ross to demonstrate it. <laughs> okay, just make a match. Uh, face to face. Match. Okay, so I want you to imagine that you, like, which is your best leg? Yeah. Okay, I want you to imagine there's someone holding your hip and your head at this point. So when you do Namiash, then you're not moving at all, yeah? Okay, so at no point are you thinking about shifting in the other way. Okay, stop showing off. <laughs> okay, so, so you have this sense that you don't kind of come across. And that will only happen if you can quickly, rapidly, rapidly close that point. If you don't, if it's only about your leg, it takes longer and therefore you've got to shift in order to balance on your leg. Keep your back straight, open your hip, close your hip. On that closure, boom, your hip goes in. So you should only ever feel like you're going in that direction. Hip in, hip back. Hip back to that direction. Okay? 
One more minute, guys. Give it a go. Yeah, LG, yeah, that's it. Like, yeah, a bit better, a bit better, good. Then, uh, Susanna, relax your shoulders a little bit more. Relax your shoulders, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. JP, a little bit more relaxed with your hip, yeah? Really, really use that hip to get that leg up, that namiash. Ah, JP, JP, think. JP, think, pull, 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 feeling, yeah? Feel like you're actually brying someone, and you'd, you'd use your hip to do that, yeah? Not just your leg position. Yeah, 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 sink into it, sink into it. Feel, JP, just watch. Feel like you're going in that direction, as your leg comes up, and then you follow it through for the, the uh, Jordan Bright, Jordan Bright. Yeah? Sensei, question. Yes. Yes. Um, we are now focusing on the lifting leg. I remember in the past we also used to focus on, focus on the pushing with the leg that stays on the ground. Is that still sort of a, a by connection? Yeah, I mean, like, it's impossible to do one without the other, right? I mean, I'm, like, as much as I'm saying, you know, we should always look... Uh, at uh, things in a holistic way, I then break it down, you know? So, I mean, that's the nature of, of uh, trying to teach a complex, um, uh, a complex thing in, in a kind of way, in a bite-sized way, right? But yeah, for sure, for, like I was just saying to JP there, but like, for sure, like, we, we wanna kind of have that, that kind of driving in. So from this point, from this point, I wanna drive in with this leg as I make that chew eye, yeah? Uh, but ultimately, it's that, that initiation that I'm, I'm trying to work on today. And going from that that inevitably open part to a closure of my hip in order to produce both my namiash and chugamburai. Of course, I'm going to use that leg. Of course, but ultimately, it's just kind of trying to dissect it a little bit. Was that? Okay, good. Okay, guys, we are rapidly running out of time and energy. So, um, look, we're going to go through taking shodan. I understand a few of you know it. Most of you know it, some of you won't. I apologize for those who won't, but this may be a time for you to relax, get a coffee, drink a beer, if you don't know it, okay? But let's go through it once, and uh, slowly, nice and relaxed, think about these elements, and then we'll go through it again. It's been fun. Okay, you're in, nice and relaxed. Okay. Okay. Chni, san, shi, go, rok, shi, Hatch, Kojo, it's me, Sanchi, go, no, Shitch, Hatch, go, Joe, it's me, Sam, she go, Rock, Shitch, Hatch, go, Joe, it. Okay. So, so often in karate, and especially Shotokan karate, because, uh, you know, Simon Bly, since they once said, Shotokan is probably the most catalogued of all the most martial arts. More books, more DVDs, you know, more YouTube videos, more professional instructors, maybe, uh, for a variety of reasons. It's probably one of the most catalogued martial arts in the world. And as a result, people are constantly looking for things to, uh, to talk about, to write about, to show. And so we get down, kind of bogged down in the minutiae of stuff. You know, like literally, you know, should your, should your finger, fingers be there or there or there in Basai Dai? Who cares? Okay, uh, but we, we tend to do that within Shotokan. Whereas actually, it's always a massive body dynamic. Now the good thing about kind of, uh, kind of focusing on little bits, little elements, is that we can become technically really good. But sometimes we can lose, uh, we lose sight of the overall picture. It's a bit like, I'll give you a very quick example. Uh, the London Underground map. The London Underground map is an amazing map, yeah? It helps, it helps both uh, people, Londoners and tourists get around London with incredible ease, okay? But if you don't know what the map is trying to represent, you might go, right, how do I get from Covent Gardens to Leicester Square? 
and you go, okay, right, I have to take the, the green line one stop and I have to go up the blue line four stops then then uh, across one stop and then down another stop and, and that's how I get to from from uh, Leicester Square or Covent Gardens to Leicester Square rather than truly understanding that they are 100 metres apart. Okay, but to go by subway, it'll take you 30 minutes. To walk, it'll take you five minutes. Okay, what we often do in Shotkan is, is constantly putting the, the, the London subway map onto karate. What do we do with this part of our hand? What do we do with this part of our hip? And we're constantly breaking it down, breaking it down, looking a little bit seg segments, yeah? Rather than looking at it as a whole. And, uh, and I think that's super important. So, so when I say, when I say, for example, in the, in the first, in the first MP, I am thinking about the line from my big toe to my impact point in order to make this, this technique. I am thinking about a total body action rather than how far can I rotate my hips? How, how strong do I have to make my chest in order to do these techniques? Try to see karate as a holistic uh, kind of movement rather than elements of hand technique, foot technique, stance, blah, blah, blah. Understand? Good. Okay, we're gonna do one more time. Take your shot on, speed and power. And then if you have any questions, you may ask. Okay. Okay, what's that, Gary? I did the exact trip on the subway first time. <laughs> Many people have, Gary. Okay, yoi, take your shot out. Okay, yoi. Itch. Ni. Nasashi. Hagoru. Shi. Hatch. Hagoru. Itch. Ni. Sashi. Go. Shi. Hatch. Hatch. Itch. Ni. San. Hashi. Go. Go. Shi. Hatch. Jump. Itch. Okay guys, that's it. So, we're gonna bow. And then, if anybody uh, wants to go, they can go. If anybody wants to ask questions, they can ask questions. But first and foremost, seats. Okay, keep going guys. Hey.